breaking as we come on the air. The Pentagon confirms President Trump ordered this airstrike that killed a powerful Iranian military commander at the Baghdad airport. Tonight, some members of Congress say the U.S. needs to prepare for possible retaliation against American troops and American interests in the Middle East. Tensions have been escalating in the region throughout the week. And we're match watching our live feeds as this all develops and it comes in by the hour. President Trump still hasn't publicly commented on the airstrike. But right after the news broke, he tweeted this picture of an American flag, which we brought to you as breaking news at 6 o'clock. And tonight, the Pentagon is laying out the decision to carry out the strike. Let's get over to Como's Cole, Cole Miller at the live desk with the very latest tonight. Cole? Well, President Neri, the Department of Defense is calling that airstrike, quote, decisive defensive action, adding that general who was killed, Qasem Soleimani, was planning future attacks on American diplomats and troops in that region. Soleimani, seen here, was the head of Iran's elite Quds Force, a U.S. designated foreign terrorist organization. The Pentagon said says he's to blame for killing hundreds of American service members and wounding thousands more in wars that stretched from Iraq to Syria. All of this comes on the heels of violent protests that were taking place at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. There, protesters were hurling rocks over the walls, setting guard posts on fire, all while trying to break through bulletproof glass. The DOD says Soleimani gave the green light on those protests. Now, the U.S. is rushing upwards of 900 troops to that area. On New Year's Eve, President Trump was asked if this means the U.S. is going to war. Do I want to? No. I want to have peace. I like peace. And Iran should want peace more than anybody. And late tonight, Iran's supreme leader warned that, quote, harsh retaliation is waiting. It's also worth noting that an anti-war protest is slated to take place here in Seattle on Saturday. And so far, Washington state lawmakers have been silent on this attack. Cole, thank you. Reaction is coming in, though, from Democratic presidential candidates and some members of Congress. Former Vice President Joe Biden just released a statement saying America could be on the brink of a major conflict. He starts out saying Soleimani deserved to be brought to justice for his crimes. But he goes on to say, quote, President Trump just tossed a stick of dynamite into a tinderbox, and he owes the American people an explanation of the strategy and plan to keep safe our troops and embassy personnel, our people and interests both here at home and abroad. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham tweeting, I appreciate President Trump's bold action against Iranian aggression to the Iranian government. If you want more, you will get more. The Senate is set to reconvene tomorrow after the holiday break. Of course, we'll be tracking the very latest developments. The United States has killed one of Iran's most high-profile commanders at the direction of U.S. President Donald Trump. And now one of the key questions, will there be retaliation? These are the first pictures of the scene. The airstrike at Baghdad International Airport this evening left at least seven people dead. But the top target, Iranian Major General Qassam Soleimani, head of the elite Quds Force. It comes after days of violence between the U.S. and Iranian-backed forces in Syria and Iraq, including airstrikes, and fiery protests that breached the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad over the new year. The killing could escalate those tensions. The U.S. had branded Soleimani a thug and a terrorist, considered the architect of Iran's seamless blend of official state power with militias, including in Iraq, where they're influential. When his militias helped U.S. and Iraqi forces against ISIS, Soleimani was spotted commanding those forces on the ground. His death could be seen as a direct attack on Iran's leadership and provoke a dangerous response. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard tonight saying he was, quote, martyred. Well, Paul Hunter is tracking the breaking reaction to this story from Washington for us tonight. And Paul, any warning that this was coming? No. Uh, in fact, there is already reporting that some in the White House were so caught by surprise on this that they're underlining a killing of this magnitude was not even seriously considered. One U.S. official is quoted as saying, I can't believe it. This is a senior figure in the Iranian military, a general who the U.S. believes is responsible for multiple attacks on U.S. troops and facilities worldwide. Bottom line, this is a big deal. If tensions between the U.S. and Iran were high after those strikes a few days ago, those tensions are now ratcheted. And let's talk more about the timing. Why now, Paul? Well, the Pentagon believes Soleimani uh, was behind the assault that killed the American contractor that led to those U.S. strikes in Syria and Iraq. The U.S. also believes Soleimani okayed the attacks on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad that we've been watching all week. And the Pentagon said tonight Soleimani had been actively planning more attacks on Americans and that this was to prevent that. 
It's also worth noting that on New Year's Eve, Donald Trump threatened Iran in a tweet, and that in turn, Iran then seemed to taunt Trump, saying, quote, you can't do anything. And now this, which the Pentagon says was indeed at the direction of Trump. Also tonight, the first reaction from Iran, a tweet from its foreign minister calling the strike rogue adventurism and an, an extremely dangerous and foolish escalation. The world, Ian, now awaits what Iran will do in response. And Paul, nice to have you watching this uh, for us tonight. Paul Hunter in Washington. The U.S. president normally quick to add his take to events. His tweet tonight had no words, just this, the American flag. And we will continue to track reaction to this breaking story through the hour. A U.S. strike force has targeted and killed Iran's most important military commander, General Ghassem Soleimani, the commander of the Revolutionary Guard Quds Force. He was responsible for Iranian foreign and military operations and is understood to have answered directly to the country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Al Khamenei. He has declared three days of national mourning in Iran and promised harsh vengeance. Mr. Soleimani was killed along with others in Iraq near Baghdad's airport in an operation the Pentagon said was at the direction of the president. It follows just days after Iranian-backed militia leaders encouraged their followers to attack the U.S. embassy in Baghdad. John Donison has the latest. This is all that was left of a convoy of cars carrying Iran's most senior military commander. His killing by the United States will shake the Middle East to the core. Qasem Soleimani was head of the elite Quds Force of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and a hugely influential figure in the region. In a statement, the Pentagon said the airstrike had been carried out at the direction of the president and that the US military had taken decisive defensive action to protect US personnel abroad. The immediate aftermath of the attack, which happened near Baghdad International Airport, was filmed by passers-by. Several other people with military ties to Iran were also killed. It comes in a week where simmering tensions between Iran and the US have boiled over. The American embassy in Baghdad has been under siege as pro-Iranian militiamen and demonstrators tried to breach its walls, angry at US airstrikes in the region. And yesterday, the US Defense Secretary hinted America might take further action against Iran. I think it's important at this point in time to not make this a United States versus Iran issue. It's really Iran versus the world. It's Iranian bad behavior that has been going on now for nearly 40 years. Last night, more than 650 US troops arrived in neighboring Kuwait to provide reinforcements. All eyes will be on Iran's response. In a region already riven with conflict, some will fear this could mean another war in the Middle East. John Donison. BBC News. Well, as John mentioned in his report, the American action was taken at the direction of President Trump. He hasn't directly commented yet, but tweeted this image of the American flag, an image which he has pinned to the top of his Twitter feed. While well, Iran's state TV channel has reported the death of Mr. Soleimani, this was how the item was shown on a news bulletin with the presenter confirming the death and then a montage of images of the head of the Quds Force. Iran's foreign minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, has also commented. On Twitter, he said the killing of Mr. Soleimani was an extremely dangerous and foolish escalation. He added that the U.S. bears responsibility for all consequences of its rogue adventurism. Well, let's speak to our international chief, international correspondent, Lise Doucette, who is in Kabul. And Lise, this has potentially massive repercussions for the whole of the Middle East region. Well, first of all, for Iran, uh, the statements coming out from Iranian officials in the aftermath of this targeted killing uh, make it very clear that Iran, the, the regime in Iran regards this as an act of war. Iran's uh, supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, has vowed uh, severe retaliation. A crushing response was the term used uh, by the defense minister. The actions taken so far by Iran are very, are very calculated. They're very diplomatic. They've already uh, summoned the Swiss uh, envoy in the capital 
capital, Tehran, the, who represents uh, U.S. interests um, in Iran. Three days of public mourning have been declared. And I think the first task will be to organize what they will hope will be a massive uh, public funeral for Qasem Soleimani, who was not just the man who uh, orchestrated Iran's military operations abroad, was in charge of military intelligence. He orchestrated the network of proxy forces across the region. He was also a significant political figure inside Iran, cult status among the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps, celebrity status uh, for others, and some regarded him as a future political leader in Iran. But of course, he is controversial uh, in Iran and, and in the region beyond. Mm, absolutely. Some have even uh, equated him to the equivalent of the American vice president in terms of how important he is within Iranian politics, but more particularly in terms of Iranian foreign policy. It would, it would be like killing the, the head of the armed forces, the head of intelligence and the foreign minister in one country all at once. That was the far-reaching influence of Qasem Soleimani. He was, in effect, the real foreign minister in the Middle East when it came to matters of, of war and peace. So, yes, his influence was, was far-reaching. That is why he was hated and despised uh, by some, particularly now the United States, which is describing him as an evil mastermind responsible for ordering attacks on American forces. American soldiers over many years, which killed thousands of Americans and many other people across the region. But for those who look to Qasem Soleimani to stabilize uh, their countries, including President Assad, the Hezbollah in Lebanon, some of the Iraqi the, it's, uh, allies in Iraq, uh, Qasem Soleimani was a huge and important uh, personality. Many will say now that he played such a key role. Who will replace him? There will certainly be others who will now try to stand in his shoes, but it is a huge loss uh, for Iran and its ambitions across the region. Why do you think the Americans chose now to kill Qasem Soleimani? They've had opportunities before, haven't they, Lise? Many times uh, they had uh, considered uh, taking out uh, Qasem Soleimani. They even had him in their sights. We know that from former American generals uh, in Iraq. Uh, and sometimes Qasem Soleimani seemed to even taunt them to say, come and get me. But they knew that they were not going to be just killing uh, a senior military commander. They would be killing uh, someone where, and there would be huge consequences. The decision now, and I think we don't have all the details yet, President Trump, according to the Pentagon, ordered uh, this this killing. Uh, it comes, of course, in the midst of rising tensions in Iraq, uh, unprecedented attacks on the American embassy uh, by some of the militias linked to Iran. Uh, and therefore, the, uh, President Trump had tweeted on New Year's Day in big capital letters saying who, that whoever was behind this would pay a big price. And when the United States ordered uh, troops to the region, nobody would have, nobody would have uh, expected that this was what he had in mind. Uh, huge, huge consequences. And, and in many Western capitals uh, this morning, they're asking how much consultation uh, has there been? What about British? What about French? What about Canadian? What about German forces in the region? And most of all, what about people across this region who, for whom there is a sharp intake of breath? Whether you loved or loathed Qasem Soleimani, you know that those who will pay the biggest price are the people in, the, in this region, in countries where this proxy war is certain to escalate. Nobody knows in what way or how, but certainly it will escalate. And we've had, obviously, we will have even more rhetoric coming out of Iran. What options do you think Iran has now going forward? Our viewers will remember all through 2019, in fact, ever since uh, President Trump decided to pull the United States out of the Iran nuclear agreement in 2018, there was concern about the escalating tensions between Iran, the United States and its allies. But the view was, and in fact, they all said it to a person, everybody wanted to avoid a war. Everyone knew the price that everyone would pay, all countries would pay if there was a war. But everyone also knew that there are many ways outside of a direct confrontation between U.S. and Iranian forces uh, to, for this confrontation to unfold. And so it was believed in countries particularly like Iraq, where there are U.S. forces, U.S. targets on the ground, as well as Iranian uh, forces and Iranian militias. There was a way for this war to be, or this conflict to, to unfold, 
indirectly, if you like. Uh, there was also, of course, in Syria, in, uh, in Lebanon, and of course, the Iranian intelligence services have, have, have far-reaching uh, capability. So it's not just inside uh, Iran's neighbors. Uh, it, it could happen even beyond the region. Iran has a formidable intelligence gathering force. It has a huge naval force. It has many, many, uh, it has many, many weapons that it can wield. So the question now is, what weapons will they wield and where will they wield them? Mm. Again, the, the, people will have to think long and hard about this because the consequences are massive. And of course, Lise, we talk about the possibility of war and, you know, on Twitter, I think World War Three is trending. But war in the sense that that could happen in the Middle East is very different to a, a, a conventional war that we know from the past, isn't it? I think the best is for, certainly in the media, that cooler heads should prevail. The, the, the hashtag World War III has been trending across the region for many years now. People use it in Syria. People have used it every time there's another conflagration. But there's no denying that a direct confrontation between Iran and the United States would be hugely consequential. But as I mentioned, it can take the place of, it can happen between proxies in the region, it can happen in terms of a, a targeted killing of the kind that uh, the United States has now carried out. And bear in mind that it wasn't uh, just Qasem Soleimani, who must have been the principal target. A senior Iraqi militia commander was killed, we understand. And there are reports that a senior Lebanese Hezbollah commander were also killed. So there will be many seeking revenge for this act uh, by uh, the United States. Distrust and hatred runs deep, but also there are many in the region for whom uh, an understanding runs deep that everyone should pause now and consider what the next steps are uh, before this unfolds into a, a conflagration where, as they often say, it's easy to get in, very, very hard to get out. Okay, Lise Tusset, our Chief International Correspondent, thank you so much for that analysis. Well, let's look at more reaction from the United States now. And the former Vice President Joe Biden is among those critical of President Trump's move. He started by saying no American will mourn Qasem Soleimani's passing and that he deserved to be brought to justice, but went on to say the administration's statement says that its goal is to deter future attacks by Iran, but this action will almost certainly have the opposite effect. President Trump has tossed a stick of dynamite into a tinderbox, and he owes the American people an explanation of the strategy and plan to keep safe our troops and embassy personnel, our people and our interests, both here at home and abroad, and our partners throughout the region and beyond. Our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, joins us now on the line. And Jeremy, uh, this could potentially have absolutely cataclysmic repercussions for the Middle East region. You know, I think it's quite likely that in the last few years, the Americans, the Israelis, and perhaps others have had Soleimani in their sights. And they have decided, even though, certainly as far as the Israelis and the Americans were concerned, uh, that uh, they, they considered him as their probably leading enemy in the in the region, one of their most effective enemies, they decided not to pull the trigger because they were concerned about the potential consequences. Uh, now it seems that President Trump has decided that the, um, if you like, the the rewards are worth the risk of doing it, that the Iranians have been weakened and that they won't be able to do the kinds of things that perhaps once they might, there are many people who perhaps would not agree with that. He was a huge figure inside Iran, wasn't he? And his influence was one mainly on Iran's foreign policy. Yeah, he's a colossal figure inside. He was a colossal figure, I should say, inside Iran. He's somebody who uh, was uh, revered by supporters of the regime, who was seen as a very effective operator, who was seen as a brave defender. Uh, they interrupted programs on Iranian TV to, uh, to broadcast an enormous very significant blow to the power centers of the Iranian Islamic regime. Uh, however, in a region that was already very tense, that was already full of violence, it, it doesn't just stir the pot. This is a serious escalation. Um, 
and it's um, the, the consequences of this will not just unfold over the next few days. It's something which is going to dominate probably this year and beyond. Mm. And the Iranian government obviously can come out with all the rhetoric it wants, but what can it do potentially, especially given that its main foreign policy strategist is now dead? Well, they've got lots of other people as well. You never know, perhaps he even made plans about what to do if someone assassinated him because he must have known that he was potentially a target. It, Iran clearly has no chance whatsoever and would never want to try to take on America in a in a face-to-face -face sense. But what it is very good at, at is what... Uh, analysts call asymmetric warfare, which, if you like, is the warfare of the, the weak or the weaker against the strong or the stronger. That means using indirect means, using proxies, using allies, uh, trying to not go through the front door, but perhaps through the side window, that kind of thing. And that's something which, over the years, the Iranians have shown themselves to be pretty good at. What's your take then, Jeremy? What do you think is going to happen next? It's a bit. It's a bit early to say, um, but the the words are flowing out of the regime in Tehran in terms of what uh, of them swearing vengeance and revenge for for what's happened. Um, President Trump has not commented directly on Twitter when it all started, but what he's done is to tweet a large picture of a U.S. flag, the stars and stripes, so it's clear where his his thoughts are going. The Israelis are going to be very very happy about what's what's happened on one level on another level they might well be worried because of course across the border in lebanon there is hezbollah who are close allies of iran and directly involved at a very intimate level with uh, with Soleimani during his his long career. So there are lots of things that could happen. There's the, the continuing tension between the Saudis, American and Israeli, well, American allies and uh, increasingly friends of Israel. Uh, on, on the one hand, you know, across the Persian Gulf, there is that particular theater. There are all kinds of places, Syria as well, where the Iranians are very active, where there could be some repercussions. You know, we're going to have to see, and perhaps when things happen, because I, I think they will happen, it'll come in a way that is perhaps surprising. OK, Jeremy Bowen, our Middle East editor, thank you very much. Well, you can get much more on this story on our website. Just log on to bbc.com forward slash news. You can find all the latest developments and background to the situation, also analysis uh, from BBC correspondents around the world.